Good morning, everybody. My name is Marco Pignataro. I'm the managing director of the Berkeley Global Jazz Institute, and I'm very happy and proud to present the second day of the student culminating experience thesis presentations. We started yesterday, and we'll end up tomorrow. Um, for today, the presentation will run um, until 1.10. Uh, Nassim, Santiago, and Basili for, for the morning, and then we'll resume at 2.10 with Alex, Chase, and Andrew, and I hope you all can be with us. I would like to acknowledge some very, very important people that have been um, working very hard on all of these uh, projects. Uh, first of all, our artistic director, Maestro Danilo Perez, please welcome him. And our faculty, from uh, the Berkeley Global Jazz Institute, amazing person and drummer, Miss Terry Lynn Carrington. <laughs> and today we also have the honor to have George Garzon or another BGJ faculty with us. George, welcome. <laughs> we would like to acknowledge uh, the Dean Camille Colatosti and Matt Marvulio, please uh, acknowledge their work. Thank you with a big Applause, thank you. <laughs> and all the staff working here, thank you all of you, and in particular Mary McClory and Witness Matlou, please clap for our great assistance. As part of the program, uh, all of the students that you'll see presenting today, they've been under a whole year of weekly advising with some uh, um, very uh, great musician and professor, and I would like to acknowledge them um, uh, as, as the advisor for the master program. Uh, professor Alan Chase, Professor Carl Riley, and Professor Bruno Raberg, thank you for all of your help. <laughs> we start today uh, with the presentation of um, uh, Nassim Alatrash is a uh, graduate from the Berkeley College of Music before entering the master. Uh, Nassim is from Bethlehem, Palestine, and he had graduated from the Na National Conservatory of Music in his hometown. An amazing uh, person, beautiful musician, and uh, he has uh, an exciting project for all of you. Please welcome Nassim. Um. Thank you, thank you, Marco. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to start by thanking Danilo and thanking Marco for giving me this opportunity uh, to be part of this amazing institute. Uh, it truly, it's such an honor to be part of an institute that offers such uh, uh, amount of creativity. I've, I've been surrounded by creativity this whole year. Uh, which which led to so many so many things to think about, not for just this this year, but for a life to come to think about musical ideas and and how we how we can use music in our society. So thank you so much. I would also like to thank my advisor Carl Riley for this year. He's been so helpful. Uh, my committee members Bruno Roberg and Eugene Friesen. Thank you so much for all the help for this year. Thank you. My project, Bright Colors on a Dark Canvas, this year, um, is an outcome of, of many years of, of thinking about, uh, about my background and how, how I can uh, say something with my music. Uh, when, when I came to the Institute, I had in mind that I wanted to do something for war victims, for refugees, because I myself grew up in Palestine, living under a country suffering from conflict, from war. And as a child, I had to go through some very difficult situations and dangerous situations. That has really affected me as a human and as a musician. And I always felt that somehow some part of the story was missing. And uh, whatever I, I would see the news, I would feel that what was missing is the human uh, story. That you hear numbers about people killed or numbers of refugees. But you don't really hear always the stories of each one of these people. And I wanted to create a project to help tell those stories, but help people also connect with a human value and help people connect with 
uh, the humanity of, the, of everyone who, who, who has to go through, through that. So my project has two contents. The first one is artistic, and the second one is a fundraising plan. The artistic project is basically an idea that I had is to create a performance of 40 minutes uh, where the band is playing music uh, that is reflect, a reflection of a, a, a sequence of sketches. And these sketches are basically telling a story that I, myself, with uh, Tariq Salsa, who is a Palestinian artist, had this vision of uh, putting together a story. And the story is about uh, a musician, uh, his hometown, leaving hometown because of war, and the difficulties that this musician goes through to make it to in a new, new place. This work is, uh, is uh, anti-war and anti-violence. Uh, my, my, my goal was to explore the strength that it takes to, to survive and to make it and stay strong. The strength it takes to, to carry your identity and how, how music is such a big source of uh, culture and identity and how we always carry it with us, even though we might lose our land, but music stays with us. And I also wanted to focus on this project on how music is a shared human experience and how this musician, this character, when he arrives to a new place, the, the first thing that he felt connected to the new place is when he started performing with local musicians in that place. Um, I will start talking about the first, uh, before I start talking about the first scene, I would like to acknowledge the musicians. I decided to go with a more intimate setting for this uh, project. Um, and I had uh, amazing, amazing talent and uh, friends that joined me. Chase Morin on piano, Jared Henderson on bass, and Lee Fish on drums. Uh, and creating this music was partially composed, partially uh, improvised, and there was also parts where we actually did a bunch of uh, uh, free improvisation and collective improvisation, which is something that we also focus on in the Institute. Uh, the first movement called Riwaya, or, or the first scene. And Riwaya is a scene, um, at the, in the, the character is at, in his hometown, somewhere in a city in the Middle East. And um, you see a scene of harvest, olive harvest, which is uh, a very common thing in the Mediterranean. And it's something that we do as a community. And that's something I, I, I saw as a connection with the Institute when we talk about community and how music is part of a community. Something that I used to do growing up is every October spend two weeks with my grandfather and the family picking olives together, singing songs together while we do that. And that really reflected to me, to, uh, and I wanted to show that as part of the first movement. Other scenes in the first movement or first uh, scene is a scene of a, a church and a mosque, because it's very common to, when you travel to, to the Middle East to hear the sounds of the church bells and the sounds of the mosque. So I, I created uh, for this scene, I wanted to go with more of an Arabic sound. So I based it on a 10-8 uh, Sama'i form, which is a common Arabic classical form. It's in 10-8, and it's, it has four sections, A, B, C, D. And the B section is the refrain that we always go back to. I took that rhythm that goes like, dum is the downbeat, the, the low, the bass, and tak is the highs. So it goes like, dum, tak, dum, dum, tak, dum, tra, ta, 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 dum, dum, tak. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. And I wrote a, a repetitive bass line. We were working with Bruno's class on the idea of a, an ostinato bass line and writing melodies above that. And then I added another uh, thing after meeting with Danilo and I played him the melody of that tune. I composed this as a melody first and then Danilo told me, why don't you create a counterpoint with the bass line? So I went home and I wrote a counterpoint. Uh, in combination with a, an ostinato, the bass line turns into a counterpoint with a melody. Um, and also, one more part in this song, when, when, uh, in this piece, when we go to, to the mosque uh, and church scene, I wanted to use a mode that is very meditative and uh, common in, in Arabic music. And this mode is called Saba. Maqam in Arabic is the name is, means mode. Um, and for this maqam, 
uh, I was thinking about how to harmonize the maqam. Um, the maqam sounds like this. It has, it has, uh, starts with a C on, on D. So it's D, E half flat. So it's, uh, it's basically if we take this minor third, D, F, and split it right by half. This makes us, uh, instead of having two half steps, you will have three quarters of a step because you're making each half step bigger. So basically, what I love about this mode is also that in, in one of its variations, it doesn't finish on the same note. It starts on D. And then it finishes on D flat. And, it, and then when it goes to the second octave, the E becomes E natural. So. So it's, it's different from one octave to another octave, which is, I think is fascinating. Um, and I was... I was with, in my lesson with Eugene Friesen, talking about this mode and trying to, to find ways to harmonize it. And we came up with this, this way of, we saw similarities of this mode with, uh, with uh, diminished scale and with altered scales. And uh, Eugene had an idea of using uh, basically a tri uh, chords, seven chords, altered chords that are uh, a third apart. So you have D, from the back D, and you have so B, D, F, and A flat chords. We used it to harmonize this mode um, over a D pedal. This is this is the first half. Uh, this is uh, how the the first part sounds like.
the second movement, the war movement, um, uh, actually, there's one thing before. This movement ends with a wedding scene. And for that, uh, I based it on Palestinian folk music. Um, and I wanted, uh, I was seeing a Palestinian folk dance called Dabke as the scene in my head. So I told the artist about that, and he created a beautiful sketch of a wedding scene. This is Palestinian folk, uh, Palestinian clothing, uh, and this is a, a folkloric dance group. Um, here's the, and for what, what they did different for that section, instead of having it in 2 4, which is usual in Palestinian folk music, I, I wrote a Palestinian sounding mel melody, but in 12 8, because uh, I was really influenced by the Abakwa and all the, the work we did with it. But I also I saw the connection with it with uh, uh, North African and also music from Kuwait and Yemen, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, all these countries that have a lot of 12-8 uh, and 6-8 rhythms. Um, so here's the second, the wedding scene. Next uh, slide, or the, the next movement, Ramad, which means ash in Arabic. This is the war movement. For this, uh, I, I used a different approach. Um, I used, uh, I was composing basically by playing war scenes and improvising to the, to the, to the, sh to the picture. And that's something that uh, Danilo talked about a lot uh, with playing with movies. But also my girlfriend actually suggested that to me which uh, I was like, okay, I'll try it. And when I did that, I, I came up with a melody and then found out that it's actually really coming from a Palestinian folk music. It's a 6-4 phrase. And uh, we have a very common uh, way of uh, folk singing that's similar to the blues where uh, an old lady would be singing a phrase that is in 6-4, is uh, like a question, and then there's an answer phrase that is in 6-4. For example, <coughs> So basically you have one, two, three, four, five, six, a question and then an answer. So I came up with a phrase that, that has that same uh, uh, idea. And, and we built it out, we, we built that phrase using also some improvisation. I told the musician, think about sounds of explosions, bullets. And I will, star I will start right at the, uh, I will start right at the, uh, at the improvisation section.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, this this was the the, the the movement, the second movement, and now I will. I'm having a little trouble here. Um, go to the slide. Hmm. Losing the PowerPoint. Okay, so I will go right into the next movement. For this movement, I used um, I wanted to write a piece that is more classical sounding, um, and I based it on uh, Fauré's elegy in C minor. Uh, the difference in this piece is that I wrote first the bass line, and then I wrote the the actual melody. And my idea was I wanted to do something, uh, I really love Baroque music and I love how there's figured bass and, and there are some indications of, of harmony. And then there's a freedom of the, the player playing, uh, filling in the harmonies. So I wrote a piece for piano and cello and basically I wrote the bass line first. And then after that I wrote the, the melody based on the, the, the harmony that the bass line is indicating. As you see, I wrote some harmony indications for chase but basically, he played the bass line in the left hand and filled out the other um, the harmonies almost uh, up to his interpretation. For the ending of that song, uh, for that piece, I, I, I was studying with the Bruno uh, the idea of playing over a drone uh, different colors. So I, I put um, a group of minor chords descending down to give that effect of sailing and, and uh, arriving somewhere because this is the scene where the character is leaving home full of sorrow and sadness. And it's a long journey, so this long um, co chords uh, indicate and give that feeling of, of the long journey. Here is uh, a small sketch of, 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 the, of that movement. <laughs> start Last movement, it's a scene where he's arriving and there's a lot of mystery. For that, I, I used a, a mode called Hijaz Kar Kurd uh, that, is, that creates, that has that sound of mystery to me. Um, it goes like this. And it has those sounds, the minor major seven. I used a lot of these chords for the intro that was partially improvi improvised, partially composed, that Chase played, 
And then I used that, those kinds of chords all over to create the sense of mystery of what's going to happen in, in, uh, in this new place. Um, and I, I was able to come up with a lot of uh, interesting chords just from extracting chords from inside that, fra uh, that, uh, that scale. Um, here's, here's a very short um, excerpt of, of that piece. I'll play a little bit of the beginning. There's a, in the end, it ends with a... The character is having thoughts about its home. drum solo that, that shows the uh, struggle and Thank you, thank you so much. I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who helped out, everyone involved with, uh, with the institute. Uh, all, these, all these names, uh, you've been so helpful and, and uh, I really, I'm really very thankful. Um, one, one thing I wanted to mention is that this music was already performed in Philadelphia, thanks to Eugene for the opportunity. Uh, we, we basically managed to fundraise uh, to help a Syrian family come to the U.S. And after that, there were the people were very inspired in Philadelphia to create an alliance for refugees after that concert to help refugees in Philadelphia. And I'm planning to continue performing uh, this music uh, and, uh, throughout uh, different NGOs that work and help uh, refugees. Uh, so thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Bravo. Wonderful. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You so much. As part of the format now, we will ask the panel to ask question or have any comments. Eugene, please join us here because you're part of the panel as well. Um, we would like to start.
Eugene, why don't you start? Hard to speak. Very moved. Going forward, Nassim, how are you preparing yourself? How, how do you think about the entrepreneurship side of this? The, the kind of expanding and expanding your network, expanding the influence of your extraordinary message and musical ambassadorship. Um, I think for the past uh, couple of years, I've been performing at different fundraising events. Um, like this past weekend, uh, I had a concert uh, fundraising for refugees. And there's, there's a movement now in the U.S. of churches really working hard on changing, especially in today's uh, climate and uh, of political climate, on changing the, the narrative of wha what, what, we, what can we do for, for refugees. And uh, for me, as a, as a Palestinian cellist, uh, I feel like there's, there's a, a message that I have to, to, to convey. So at, at the moment, my plan is to release an album, uh, including this music, and to, uh, to perform it in the US and also back home, uh, as well as seeing w ways of how, how I can bring this, th these concepts that, that, were get, that, that got stronger here in the Institute to, to other musicians back home and uh, the musicians I work with here to keep developing this, uh, this idea of a musician uh, b being entrepreneur and, and uh, also bringing social change. Um, so I feel like uh, the first step for me after, after this is, is basically releasing the music, uh, both DV with the DVD so that people can watch it, but also releasing it on my album as a separate track. Uh, with a with message included in that. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Nassim, um, and with Eugene, it's, it's um, hard to speak almost because uh, your project is <coughs> so moving. Um, Thank you. It was a great honor to be able to work with you this semester uh, in the composition class. Uh, every week you would bring in stuff that that even if it was just a sketch, uh, like a, from a homework assignment, it would still speak, um, just like your incredible cello playing. Uh, you have such an amazingly strong voice um, that just communicates straight to you. Um, and I want to especially also give a thanks to Eugene Friesen, because I know uh, you have worked with Eugene for many years now. And I can hear the, the, the influence and the spirit <coughs> of Eugene's uh, approach to playing um, in your playing also. Um, special compliment to the group, Chase, Lee, and Jared. It was really an amazing, amazing group. And I was happy to be asked to be in the studio. Um, and it, it was an exhilar exhilarating <laughs> experience to, to be there when you guys uh, played this music. Um, I don't know what more to add. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Your, your uh, presence in the studio and your comments were very helpful in the editing and in the, in, in, in the spirit in the studio. So thank you for that. Thanks. Yeah, congratulations. An amazing thank you. project. Thanks. I would buy this recording tomorrow, <laughs> today. So thanks. Um, I had a couple of questions. Uh, well, actually, really one. I think the fundraising part was pretty much just answered, though I, I would like, like to um, have heard a little more about the fundraising aspect since you had it as split. Um, I mean, if you want to elaborate a little more on the fundraising part, that would be good. Um, uh, as of the moment, uh, my my plan is to contact once the music is ready. Now I can contact uh, all the institutions that I've, to some extent, worked with before, but performing other other music, 
uh, maybe other traditional music and so on, and and show them the this work and and see how they can fit it in into their uh, in, into their events, into their fundraising. Contact the churches uh, throughout the U.S. that are involved with this, um, and basically they have all these events where. They have a concert that is uh, the, t the ticket sales and and other uh, other things that they they fundraise during the event goes directly to medical um, institutions, uh, building hospitals in Syria, helping Palestinian refugees also. Um, so, I think my plan f as of no from now is since I have the product now, I can I can show them uh, the art, show them the music, and and see how they can organize maybe a tour. Uh, uh, that that is basically uh, focusing on having the outcome uh, of ticket sales be uh, uh, donated for for refugees and for for war victims. Okay, and the other um, question, the four parts, um, I didn't get the translation of all of them. Uh, like the first one, uh, Rewaya, am I saying it right? Yeah, uh, sorry about that. Uh, Rewaya means in a story, but more of like a, no a novel. Uh, and, and the reason I recalled it that because it's, it's, it, it's the part that is really uh, telling uh, the story of, of, of life and uh, daily life in, in, in this, uh, this town that the, the scene is showing. Mm -hmm. The second movement is called Ramad with M Ash. Third movement is Rahil, which means leaving or exodus in a, in a sense of uh, leaving in big groups, you know. Um, and the fourth movement, Risala, which means uh, message. That's uh, the exact translation to, to, the, to the last one. Excellent. Thank you. Great, uh, Thank you. great, great project. Thank you so much. Nassim, congratulations. You know, I wrote Thank a bunch you. of notes. Uh, as I was listening, listening to the music, I, I, you know, original, super original, it, it really contributed to the development of music and adding, you know, new sounds to jazz, you know, a quartet with piano, with the cello, playing is unbelievable, great to, to hear you grow so much in this year too. Um, the presentation, very clear, um, I, would, I would add um, uh, an, an advice, it's like, um, you want to have it in a PowerPoint that you don't have to be like, take the clutter away from the computer because this is amazing and it doesn't go with that. That's my ad an advice because this, this is going to get to, this kind of presentation is going to go to as high as you can. It's so heavy. But the clutter and the thing got to go, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, that, that's something for me too. I, I do that too. That's an advice. That's the only thing I would recommend. Like, and super wonderful orchestration that you did. And I think this project really, I started writing some questions like, how does music impact the way people think and act? You presented a project that is very strong about it. How can music encourage people to participate in their community, their nation and the world? So you answered some heavy question at this time of the, that we're living on with the presidency we have, with the situation you have in your country. This, this really personally wants to make me go to Palestine. In the, in, in the way you presented, the music provided such a hopeful experience and it created a new world, an illusional world. You're creating a new world for all of us. And, and I think that's, as an artist, congratulations. You just, you just made such a tremendous contribution to the field. And what role can music play in a movement for social change. I feel that you have presented this. So we need to, to you and Terry and everybody, we need to present this to the president, bring it to the senators, bring it to the people, and this is the new world that we wanna build. And the last question you answered for me was, what kind of world do we want for us in the 21st century? That's it. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Danilo. <laughs> Yes, it's just, just in, in addition to what Danilo says, exactly because of everything he said, and for having witnessed in, in the pedagogy class how great of a teacher you are as well, I think you can really add a whole pedagogical part of this presentation beside you know, the, the concert and the fundraising, 
but really kind of present this from an education point of view, both of the music and the mission you're bringing on. And I know you can do it just because you're a really great teacher. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Thanks, Marco. Bravo. Um, I want to congratulate you on your, the facility that you have for collaboration, for reaching out. Um, <clears throat> when um, I brought up the subject of your committee, um, you didn't have to think about that. Your committee was already formed. And that's the way that I think um, ultimately it should work in this program. Um, in fact, I, don't, I didn't even um, completely accept the word committee. I added to that committee of consultants. And the way that you reached out to Bruno and the way that you've worked with Eugene over several years is exactly that. These are, this, this is your group of consultants. And it was a pleasure for me to be a witness as you channeled such strong emotions into an artistic expression. It came from something so personal and it made that journey to the artistic, to the poetic, and to the universal. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And incidentally, your committee is not signing off as of today. We, we are here, at least I am. Thank I you. just wanted to add one small comment, which you beautifully articulated, Danilo. And it reminds me of a conversation I had with Dan Berrigan some years ago. He was a great uh, social activist, peace activist. And uh, his simple answer about how the world can change is first we have to imagine it. And it's up to the artists, it seems, to really create the imagery, the pictures, the imagination. Bravo, you've done it beautifully. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you. Congratulations, Asim. Thank you so much.